Hey guys, so today I'm just kind of bored, so I'm gonna film another part of my bookshelf tour today. We're gonna be taking on, uh, another shelf, basically. So, here we go with that! <laughs> Okay, so this is the shelf that we're going to be overviewing today. Um, this is kind of what I call my childhood books shelf. These are still, still kind of classics, but not like really difficult classics. And then at the end, there's some of my like books aimed at younger children, um, which are mostly on this shelf. But some of them have to be up here because of space issues. Alright, so to start off, we have the Little House on the Prairie series. My mom got me one of these every Christmas until I had them all. So I love them, and they're nice. And then we move on to the Nancy Drew, Nancy Drew series. Um, I have quite a few of them, although I do not have nearly all of them because there are a lot, a lot, a lot. But there was like there there used to be these like deals at uh, Sam's Club where you could buy like six of them at a time, and so I just got them there. And then same with these Hardy Boys mysteries that I have. Although for these it was interesting because I was just in the middle of the sixth one because I got one through six of the Hardy Boys mysteries, and I was in the middle of the sixth one, and we went to this park with this um summer program I was at, and then I left it on a swing while we were eating lunch, and I came back and it was gone. Somebody stole my Hardy Boys book when I was, like, twelve, and it was really annoying, and I was very sad. Um, and I didn't understand it, because nobody liked books as much as I did, and why would anyone take it? So, I didn't, I didn't get it, but... I still have the first five, so at least I didn't lose one from the middle. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And then over here on the end, we have the Spy X um, Quadrilogy? Quadrilogy? Is it a quadrilogy when there's four of them? Anyway, yeah, that's what this is. Um, it's basically about these two kids whose mother disappears and then they, f they find a bunch of like cool spy stuff. Uh, and, like, their neighbor turns out to be a spy or something, and they start spying on people and figuring out puzzles, and it's actually really cool, and I like them, which is why I still have them, even though they're, like, really simple and short. I like them. Alright, this shelf did not take me nearly as long as I had thought it would, considering, well, actually, I didn't actually think this shelf would take that long because of the whole giant series thing that I have going on with it, so we're just gonna move on to the next one, which is this one, which is what I call my books aimed at 12 year olds kind of a shelf, like books that are, I don't know, you'd find them in the children's section, but they're not really for kid kids, uh, and they're not really for young adults, so they're for like 12 years old, you know what I mean? Just give me a second to move all these knickknacks out of the way. Oop. Here we go! So here I have books 1, 2, 8, 9, 12, and 13 of the Witch series because I liked those a lot, but I could never get them in order. So I've, I've read very little little pieces of it here and there. And I actually read a few from the library, so you know, I know kind of the storyline of the first 10 or so books. But I only own these scattered, scattered volumes. Then, next, we've got the, the Children of the Lamp series. There's more to this series now, but back when I was into it, there was only these two books. Um, and I really like these. They're about these, like, 12-year-old kids who find out that they're actually genies. Which is interesting and cool, and it was nice. Uh, then, there's the Silverwing, Sunwing, Firewing kind of a thing series. It's about bats. And it's a story told from the perspective of a bat about bats and, you know, flying places and getting lost away from the family and needing to find their way home. This one is actually very interesting in the sense that it's about 
uh, the underworld and the bats traveling to the underworld and having to find their way home again. When I got this book, I, I read it all the way through and then I found... Oh, here. Here, let me show you. As you can see, this page, the letters are actually written in because when I bought it, they were very... There were quite a few pages at the end that hadn't printed properly. Like, they were printed like this. So eventually I decided it's just too hard to read this faded print, and I wrote over top of the words so you could actually see them. It's quite difficult to write that small when you're like 12, so I didn't actually get all of them done. And someday I will, so it will be not difficult to read this series. But for now, yeah, that's, that's one of my interesting book stories. Next is The Fairy's Return, which is a bunch of fun little stories of kind of retellings of fairy tales with an interesting twist. Charlie Bone and the Invisible Boy, the Charlie Bone series, book number three. I started with book number three, and then eventually I went back and read the first two and the rest of the series, but I think book number three is still my favorite. Sammy Keys and the Art of Deception, which I got from my grandmother, I think. Which is cool. It's about this girl detective who figures things out. Um, Peter and the Star Catchers and Peter and the Shadow Thieves was very interesting when I was a child because it was so awesome. Then Time Riders, which is a thing I got recently. Uh, even though I'm older, I was still like, ooh, time travel, 12-year-olds. Yes, let's do this. Which is cool. It's about these kids from different time periods who become, who are about to die and somehow get recruited into this Time Riders kind of club where they go through time and make sure that people aren't messing with time. And then we have the Mysterious Benedict Society and the Mysterious Benedict Society and the Perilous Journey, which are in the wrong order. They're supposed to go the other way around because series... Okay, there. Now they're in the right order. They're just really cool and have fun illustrations and brainwashing and intelligent children, and I like intelligent children. Also, they have very nice light cover art. It's pretty. Okay. On to the next. I have Ink Heart and Ink Spell. I never actually got around to reading the third one. And I think originally when I got these, I couldn't figure out which one was first, so I tried reading Ink Spell first, and I didn't understand what was going on. Uh, and then later I found out that Ink Heart was actually supposed to be first, and then I read them the right way around, and I actually really liked them. Next here is The Incorrigible Children of Ash Ashton Place. Book number one, The Mysterious Howling. Uh, I got this, and I was very, very unaware of what was going on in this book. I didn't actually... I didn't get it. Um, from what I can remember, there were children who were very badly behaved, and a new nanny, and hunting, and forest, and this manor lodge out in the middle of the country where nobody really goes. Uh... This is all quite scattered. These are the myriad elements that I remember, um, and not supposed to be a description of the plot. But I just remember being really confused about what was going on through the whole thing. Then we have Dragon Rider, um, which is fun, and I liked it. It's about this kid and these dragons who need to find a new habitat because humans are encroaching on their old one, and they think there's a mouse who can talk in there somewhere, which is fun. Um, and then Firestar which is also about dragons in a way. Uh, it's the third book in a series, and I used to have the first two, but then somebody borrowed them and moved away, and now I don't have them anymore. Which is sad, because I only ever read the first one, and I wanted to read this one, and I want to, like, figure out about the series, what it's actually about, and what the story actually goes like, but I can't, because the first two were taken from me. Which is sad. Then finally on the shelf there's Rash by um, Pete Hopman. The, the author came to my high school uh, a few years ago and his books were basically on sale that day so I bought this one because it was interesting um, and seemed more interesting than some of the other books by him that I had or that I could see. It's still rather weird. I don't remember exactly what it was about. I don't remember liking it though. Uh, I don't remember hating it so there's that. Yeah. Oof. So, that's that shelf, and that's these two shelves. 
And I think that's that's long enough for this. Well, there you go. That was uh, part two of my bookshelf tour. Look out for more parts to come, and make sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you liked what I'm doing here and all of that stuff. Uh, cool beans. Bye.